Hello again everyone and welcome back. I've done several videos on my home lab recently and I was shocked to basically find out that you guys really enjoy this kind of thing and that works out well for me because home lab is a very important hobby, something that I spend a lot of hours maintaining and tweaking and configuring. It's basically a lot of fun and in those videos you guys have asked me to show you the process that I go through how I render video on this channel. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. Okay, so what I'm going to do is open up my laptop here. And what you are seeing here is one of my two Proxmox servers. Proxmox is a virtualization solution. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. I logged into VM host one, but I have two different servers here. And I have a bunch of VMs here on the first one and a few on the second one here. Now of special interest is this VM right here called Videomatic. I'm going to get back to this in just a moment, but basically this is the virtual machine that I use to do my renders for my channel. Now the process doesn't actually start here though. I'll switch over here to a file manager, and you can see that I am in my Learn Linux TV folder. I have a work in progress folder, and then I have an unedited folder, which is where I keep all of my projects that are unfinished. And then in this folder, I basically have all of my project files for a Manjaro preview that I'm working on that you've probably already seen by the time this video makes it online. And I have a lot of other video projects in this unedited folder, but I'm going to use this Manjaro video as the example today. Now I have a raw folder, and inside there is the unedited video file as captured from my recording devices. Now all the video, audio, and different camera angles all get mixed into one file, so I only need to edit this one file to upload a video. Now if I go here to the Caden Live folder, you can see that I have basically a bunch of edits here. I've already edited this video. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. But basically what I do is I save every now and then to a new file. So if the file gets corrupted, I can go back to a previous one. This is important to me because Caden Live, although it's a very sweet piece of software, it does crash every now and then and it doesn't always recover gracefully, so I definitely want to make sure that I have snapshots of the project at various stages. So now what I'll do is open up Caden Live, show you the project. I have two here because I also have the app image version installed, which is actually newer than the one that normally comes with Ubuntu, or in this case, Pop! OS. Now what I'm going to do is click Open, and I'm already in the project folder because, you know, that's what I was already working on. So I'll just open up the newest version of the file. And again, this project is already done, but you can get a look at my timeline and really how messy it is. I have all kinds of cuts and edits here. The reason being because there's constantly cars driving by in the background and I'll have to stop talking, I'll have to repeat myself over and over and over again. It's actually so bad that a 15 minute video can take over an hour to record because I have to keep repeating myself like I mentioned. It's definitely not fun, but if you're curious why I have so many cuts all over the place, that's probably the reason why. You can see how much editing I actually have to do for a video. Now this is a fun one. This is a look at Manjaro 19. It's going to be awesome. So let's go ahead and get it rendered. Now you might think that I'll click on the render button right here, but that's actually not what I'm going to do. I'm going to close it instead. Now I do all of my editing on my laptop, but again, I don't render on my laptop. I have this server right here, Videomatic. If I go to the hardware tab, you can see that I actually have 12 cores allocated to this because I want it to get through the job as quickly as possible. The reason why I do the rendering on this server is because if I was to do that on my laptop, Cadent Live is horribly inefficient when it comes to resource management and will make the computer practically unusable. So that's why I offload all of my renders to this server. So if I go to console, 
So password. So currently I am running Ubuntu Mate inside this virtual machine. And what I'll do is go ahead and open up Caden Live. Yes, it's actually in my home directory. I have a bin folder. And these are app images. I changed the extension to .app because I think it's cooler. Normally the extension is .app image. But here is Caden Live right here. This allows me to get the latest version of Caden Live without having to wait for the repositories on Pop! OS Ubuntu or whatever I'm using to update. So I should be able to simply double click on it. And it does take a little bit to open, so I'll maximize it. So I'll click on open. And then I'll click on the most recent version of the project file. Let's open that up. It's going to load the project. And you see a little clip basically of the unedited version for some reason here, but it's all edited, it's all done. The resolution here isn't really all that great, so you can't see what's going on unless you really search for it. But that doesn't matter. I've already edited the video, so what I'll do is just go ahead and render it. We'll get back to the video shortly, but I want to take a moment to thank my sponsor, Linode. In fact, there's never been a better time to try Linode because from now until May 31st, 2020, Linode is giving every single account access to object storage for free. That's right, whether you've created an account way back in 2003 or just today, you can take advantage of free object storage at Linode until May 31st. And what precisely is object storage, you might ask? Object storage is an easy way for you to store and access data without the need for a running server. And it's perfect for data that doesn't regularly change, like images and other multimedia files, important backups, or giant archives for servers that might need more storage space. One of the best use cases for object storage is hosting your own static website. You can have a site up and highly available on Linode's object storage service with as little as an HTML and CSS file. To give object storage a try for free and get an additional $20 credit on your new Linode account, sign up at www.linode.com slash learn Linux TV. I really appreciate Linode as a sponsor. Not only are they a sponsor, they've been my cloud infrastructure provider for quite some time now, and their service is awesome. Definitely check them out. Now let's get back to the video. Now what I'll do is just double check all of the options here and make sure that everything is totally fine. So I'll click on more options. It's using 11 threads. I've allocated 12 CPUs to the VM. I basically just want at least one CPU for the operating system itself. Then up here, I'm going to click on the file icon and I'm already in the project folder. So what I need to do is basically give it a name. It defaults to the name of the actual project file, but what's interesting, let's see if the bug actually happens. I'll delete part of the name here. I just want to call it final, so I will click save. And even though I removed this part right here from the file name, it must be a bug or something, it, it doesn't actually change the file name. But we should be good to go. So what I'll do now is click on render to file. And it's going to render the video. Now, even though I have 12 cores allocated to this VM and 11 for purposes like Caden Live, it's still going to take a very long time to finish. And actually the fans in the server itself are going to get really, really loud. That's why the servers are down the hall and not in the same room with me, because when those things are busy, you definitely hear it. And then we'll basically just let this render. It's currently estimating 44 minutes until this is done. However, it's not going to take that long. See, it even now just dropped down to 35. So that's going to fluctuate basically a lot as this renders. So I'll just let it run, and then I'll be back as soon as it's finished. So now the rendering is finished. It took about 17 minutes for this to complete. And the reason why this generally takes a very long time is because my raw video footage has a very high frame rate it's probably way above and beyond what's even necessary 
It is recorded at 60 frames per second, which is probably overkill, but I figure why not have more frames if I can. I am thinking I might actually lower that to make the process a little bit quicker, but I'll just see what you guys think in the comments below before I do anything like that. Now, I can't believe I forgot the most important part of this entire process, the software that glues this all together, and that is SyncThing. So behind this window here, I have SyncThing GTK, which is a GTK front end to SyncThing, which by default doesn't have a GUI other than a web console. And I have a bunch of folders here. These are all shared folders that ultimately get shared between all of my machines. They all get shared directly to my SyncThing server. And then my SyncThing server sends those same files out to every other node, basically my laptops and my desktops. Long story made short, if I save a file on one of my machines in any one of these folders, then that file will get copied to all of my other computers. And that includes this folder right here, which is projects. And this is actually where my YouTube files are stored. Right now, I only have about 37 gigabytes in there, but that can vary. I could have a couple hundred gigabytes in there at a time, depending on how many unedited videos I have. And then here on my video rendering server, if I go back to my file manager, you can see that I actually have my projects folder right here. And again, that's where my YouTube raw recordings, project files, and everything are saved and distributed via sync thing. And that's how I was able to go onto this server and open that Caden Live project file. As you can see, the path includes projects and then I have a YouTube directory in there and then a folder for my YouTube channel. And the reason why I have a folder specifically for this YouTube channel is because my son and I, we also have a YouTube channel that we do for fun called Cross Generation Gaming. I have a folder in there for that as well. But basically our channel, what we do is we play retro games from my childhood and we get his impressions, which is just fun. We don't upload a ton very often, but that is why I have a folder specifically for this channel because technically I am uploading to two different channels. Then I have my work in progress folder, my unedited videos, and then the project folder. That's how I was able to open up this file. So now that it's rendered, I'll close this. I did change some settings for the default render settings, so I'll click save one last time. And then I can go ahead and close out of Caden Live. I'm all set. And since I rendered the video on this server and it has sync thing just like all my other servers and laptops and desktops, then that means that the final video should already be on my local laptop. So if I switch over to my file manager, we can see the final video right here. So now from any of my machines, I can go ahead and upload this video directly to YouTube so you guys will be able to finally see it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. As soon as I stop recording, I'm going to upload this video to YouTube so that you guys will finally be able to see it. So what did you think of my rendering process? I know it's not the most amazing thing in the world, but I think it's cool to offload the rendering process to a server so that my local laptop doesn't get bogged down by a resource hungry program such as Caden Live. So let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you again real soon.